This module will start with a brief history of WLAN technology. We will look at some of the different standards, some of the regulatory agencies like IETF, IEEE, and Wi-Fi Alliance. We will look at the original 802.11 standard, the ratified amendments, many of which were incorporated into the 802.11.2012 standard and the 802.11.2016 standard, and the draft amendments of various 802.11 task groups. So let's get started. The title of the objective is Networking Industry Organizations and IEEE Standards. IEEE approved the 802.11 standard back in 1997, and it is often referred to as 802.11 Prime because it was the first WLAN standard. The standard was revised in 1999 and reaffirmed in 2003. After 2003, several significant amendments have been introduced. The specification was updated again in 2007. Also updated in 2012, 2013, and 2016, which is currently referenced as the 802.11-2016 standard. This 802.11-2016 standard includes various amendments, like 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11d, 802.11g, and so on, into a single document that is now published as the 802.11-2016 standard. Let's talk about wireless standard organizations, IEEE. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers created the 802.11 standard and subsequent WLAN amendments. The IEEE standards follows the rules of the communications organizations such as the FCC. IEEE doesn't make equipment, but IEEE standards are in the form of written documents describing how technical processes and equipment should function so that the vendors can follow those standards in their equipment. Wi-Fi Alliance Wi-Fi Alliance is a non-profit organization with hundreds of member companies devoted to improving the equipment we use with wireless communications. The goal of this organization is to examine the different vendors' equipment and make sure that they work the way the standard was set and they would interoperate with other vendor products. So when they test the equipment, you'll often see the little Wi-Fi certified logo. That means that it's going to work with uh, other networking vendors such as Cisco, Aruba, and Juniper. The Internet Engineering Task Force, IETF, is an international standards organization for the Internet. The IETF manages the creation of Internet standards through a standards process. An Internet specification goes through a process of development and requests comments or feedback by the Internet community that eventually become standards that we use in different types of internet communication. The goal of IETF is to produce high quality, relevant technical and engineering documents, including protocol standards, best current practices, and informational documents of various kinds. Regional regulatory agencies are responsible for setting the rules in each regulatory domain that dictate how wireless devices may and may not be used, and allocates frequency bands, maximum power levels, and radio channels along with the conditions regarding their use. In order for a networking equipment manufacturer to sell its product within a country or region, it must prove that its product operates within the rules of the relevant regulatory domain. Let's look at 802.11.2016 amendments. There have been a number of enhancements and refinements to 802.11 standard. We'll take a look at several of them, beginning with 802.11a. This was created as an extension to the original 802.11 standard and supports a higher bandwidth, up to 54 megabits per second, and a frequency spectrum around 5 gigahertz. Now that higher frequency does offer a better quality signal, but by nature, higher frequencies do not travel as far as lower ones do, so it shortens the range of a network 
And further, the higher frequency makes signals more difficult to penetrate obstructions, such as walls. In terms of the pros, it does offer that higher speed and the use of regulated frequencies, meaning that other devices do not use this frequency, so this prevents signal interference. But on the downside, it can shorten the range and be more easily obstructed. The 802.11a improved on DSS with the use of OFDM, that is Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. Modulation technology allows to send more data over the same channel, so we have got higher speeds. 802.11b supports bandwidths of up to 11 megabits per second, so considerably slower. This is comparable to the traditional Ethernet around 10 megabits per second. It uses unregulated 2.4 gigahertz frequency bands, meaning a lot of devices use the same frequency. So ultimately, it can incur interference from devices using the same 2.4 gigahertz range. Some common examples are microwave ovens, cordless phones, and various other appliances. So they can disrupt the signals. So in terms of the pros, it is a lower cost and it has better ranges. And it's not as easily obstructed. But on the con side, it has the slowest maximum speed. And again, susceptible to interference because of that unregulated frequency band. So you might think, well, if it's not as fast as a A and it suffers from possible interference and simply the fact that it uses letter B, then why it came out after A. In fact, A and B were released at the same time, and it really just comes down to what you prefer. If you want the lower cost and the better range, you went with B, but it wasn't as fast. Though A was faster, but more easily obstructed. So there was always the trade-off in either case. The physical layer medium that was defined by 802.11b is HRDSSS, that is, High Rate Direct Sequence Spread Spectrum. Eight hundred two point eleven g emerged in 2002 and 2003, and this combines the best of both A and B together. It supports the higher bandwidth of up to 54 megabits per second, but uses the 2.4 gigahertz frequency for greater range. This was also backward compatible. In other words, it worked with the already in place B wireless adapters. In terms of the pros, you get that ma fast maximum speed, again, up to 54 megabits per second. You get good signal range, which is not easily obstructed, but it could have been more expensive than the B that was already implemented. Plus, it still might suffer from interference because it was using 2.4 gigahertz. 802.11g mandates support for both OFDM and DSSS technologies in the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. 802.11n is often referred to as wireless N. It improves on G by offering greater bandwidth and utilizing multiple wireless signals and antennas instead of just one. This is known as MIMO technology. A lot of the early wireless routers had a single antenna, so this can support bandwidths of up to 600 megabits per second. And a better range and increased signal intensity. So in terms of the pros, we now have the fastest maximum, maximum speed that is 600 megabits per second, the best signal range, and the most resistant to signal interference. And it's still backwards compatible. As far as cons are concerned, it's more expensive compared to previous standards and use of multiple signals may interfere with nearby 802.11b and 802.11g based networks. 802.11n supports HR, DSSS, OFDM, and ERP technologies. The 802.11 AD amendment is for the 60 GHz frequency space which is not within the traditional 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz spaces and is limited to line-of-sight communications, as the high-frequency signal will have difficulty penetrating walls, 
For this reason, it will not be compatible with any previous 802.11 standards. The 802.11 AC amendment defines very high throughput or VHT enhancements below 6 GHz. The technology is used only in 5 GHz frequency bands. 802.11 AC takes advantage of the greater spectrum space and defines a maximum data rate of approximately 7 gigabits per second. 802.11 AC provides the capability to use 256 QAM modulation, which can provide at least a 30% increase in speed over previous modulation methods. 802.11 AX standard can operate in both the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands, meaning it stays backwards compatible with 802.11 AC and even with 802.11 in devices. 802.11 AX uses new multi-user version of OFDM technology. As opposed to the single-user OFDM technology already used by 802.11 A, G, and N, and AC radios. Another important 802.11 AX enhancement is that an 802.11 AX access point can manage both downlink and uplink transmissions to multiple client radios while access point has control of the medium. So in this module, we looked at the 802.11 standards from the IEEE. We started with a brief discussion of the original ones. Then we looked at the 2016 amendments. I hope you understood all the concepts and I will see you in next lesson.